And so, you know, when, we, when I was thinking about this concept, and Tyler and I have talked about this, like, I've done everything you can do nationally um, as far as travel goes and people and brands, but I wanted to do something locally. And that was kind of what brought Tower and I together. We both, I mean, I'm going to talk about Tower in a minute, but, uh, you know, we had this desire to give back to Greenville and to really activate what we knew was a growing, booming community of people. And so that was really the premise of where we started. Tower and I sat down, I had an idea, mainly a name. And, uh, and a thought about how we get back to Greenville. And Tyra and I started whiteboarding things, and we were like, what's the mission? And we saw the problem of Greenville's booming. There's all, you know, downtown, you know, my wife and I, Nicole, who's so uh, beautiful up at the front, like checking people in, uh, it's a family affair uh, <laughs> and everything. And so we, uh, I've watched Greenville grow, especially moving back from Manhattan in 2014. The skyline's changed, it's boomed, but we saw this challenge, this problem. You know, Tyler and I are like, you know, it's booming, but there's not an outlet for people to get together, a modern outlet. And so that's where the mission started, was how do we get like-minded people together regularly? And it might start, we weren't sure, like maybe it'd be 10 people the first event, you know, 20 the next, and lo and behold, we had... 60 or 70 in the two days before July 4th, and then I think tonight we have about 100. And so we're, first and foremost, thank you <laughs> for coming, because you know, you throw a party, you want somebody to show up. <laughs> but the mission was clear, it was like, how do we bring all these people together, and how do we bring value to the community through engagement and through real transparent discussion? So that was kind of like the challenge. It's like Greenville's booming, business is booming, and all these things, and you see it booming, but are the people booming? Are, are we all growing with Greenville? And I think the answer, at least for Tyler and I, was no. You know, like we're doing lots of things, and we're both socially active and doing all kinds of stuff, and, but we didn't feel like the community and the entrepreneurial, it's not even just entrepreneurs, it's just the like-minded kind of coming together. And so that was the mission. And so as I learned to use this clicker, there was a vision. And it's really to grow a green from the inside out. So how do we do that? We bring everyone together. And when you think about it, it's about the scarcest resource in any community is its people. Because people is what make things happen. And we really wanted to blend modern networking with this idea of growth. And what does that look like? Well, it's going to look like Jonathan Parker, who you'd spend thousands of dollars to come see. It was Rebecca Heiss last month. Next month, it'll be probably Dan Walshmit. We've got a list of, of speakers that you'd spend thousands of dollars to come and see. And we're going to have them here on this stage talking with you, bringing value and growth to Greenville's scarcest resource, which is you, everyone that's here. If you're here tonight, you are Greenville's best asset. And so we recognized that and wanted to bring everyone together. And that's really just a little bit about who we are. Let's talk about what we're not. <laughs> I think it's important. We're not shallow networking. We're not a box to be checked. We're not a lead farm. Um, what we think is going to happen is everyone here is going to get more business and everyone's going to learn and grow. That's the end. We're about the means, the means to the end. The means to the end is bringing like-minded people together and being transparent, being real, forcing real conversations, which we're going to do tonight, and that's what's going to happen. And so that's what we're not. I want to talk a little bit about Tyler. So, you know, I've known Tyler for 10 years, and honestly, I've never seen more personal growth from someone in, in the amount of time that I've known Tyler. Um, Tyler's gone from literally being broke, looking for his next thing, so now he's a millionaire. He's, he is the real deal. Um, it's so funny, you, I see his content, and you know he's talking nationally now and doing different things, but he is so genuine and so real. And so you see his content, and you see his stuff, and you see these things, and you wonder, who's this guy? You know, like you're kind of interested, but you, you do assume this ego, and he's not. He's the most genuine, real person I know. And I'm so proud to be partnering with him 
um, both Clemson grads, go Tigers, <laughs> and uh, I'm just really, really excited to partner him, and I uh, appreciate him being here. Awesome, man. Thank you. <clears throat> Some of that was true. Um, let me get that clicker back from you. So we talked about what GVL Hustle is not. I'm going to go real quick through this so we can get to our speaker, which is why you guys are here. But this is what GVL Hustle is. And so for those of you that weren't here last month, we actually did an exercise where we broke people out in groups and we said, hey, what is GVL Hustle to you? So GVL Hustle is. And the second question was, GVL Hustle will help me. What can GVL Hustle help you do? And everybody broke into groups and they came up with these lists and we came through those. Uh, we came back together and we went through those. And here were some of the answers. Stuff like growth, real, mentorship, entrepreneurship, inspiration, opportunity, accountability, diversity, purpose, outreach, networking, passion, authentic, empower. All these different things were kind of the, the central theme of what was said back to us when we got back together. And the interesting thing that we found is every conversation we've had with somebody, they're like, what is this GVL hustle thing? Like, what the, what the heck? It's like, I'm so tired of the word hustle, right? They're like, well, I don't know. What do you think it is? And so we kind of told them about what we were doing. Well, man, I think it's about... Um, it's about empowering you know, people in Greenville. Great, awesome, that's what it is for you. Uh, I think it's about uh, accountability, like being able to go somewhere where people will call you out on your stuff, uh, will actually like hold you to your word and things like that. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, that's exactly what it is to that person. And it became a different thing for every single person that we asked and every conversation that we had. And this is what that kind of looked like in a group setting uh, last time. So I'm excited to announce our guest speaker tonight. And I have the best introduction for Jonathan by far because of the story of how I met him. So I met him uh, randomly through a kind of a church thing, kind of, not really, I don't know, I guess a church thing. And we met for coffee one day. He's like, hey, let's meet for coffee. I'd love to get to know you. Awesome. We meet over at Starbucks. And I can remember sitting there in that conversation. We probably talked for like an hour. And I can remember leaving Starbucks, getting in my car, and thinking to myself, literally thinking to myself, I should never talk to anyone ever again. Like, I'm the worst at conversations ever. Like, I just felt so outclassed, out-communicated, out, like, understood, out, like, everything. I was just like, I'm never talking to anyone ever, ever again. It wasn't for another probably year until I find out that his central focus and what he talks about and teaches about and coaches about is the art of conversation. I was like, got it. It makes so much sense. <laughs> But I'm glad that I was able to experience that on the front end organically, not knowing that, and was able to experience kind of the, the proof in the pudding, I guess. Like, I, I was able to experience it on a personal level without having the bias of, this guy's really good at conversations, about to go have a conversation with him and leave, and I'm like, man, that was a great conversation. Like, I had no context, and I was still blown away by it, which makes it that much more powerful. Uh, but Jonathan's going to come up, and he's going to talk to us about the fact that we are all artists, whether you believe it or not, whether you paint, whether you play music, whether you sing, we're all artists and we're vocal artists. And when we get together, we create vocal art. And it's something that's really opened up my mind into this concept around conversation of getting together with people and creating art together that exists when you part ways. And then when you get back together, you still have that art that you've created sitting on the wall and then you can build from there. It's just a completely different mentality and way to look at communicating. Um, and so I'm glad that he kind of opened my mind up to that. It's really affected the conversations that I've had ever since. But he's going to dig a lot deeper uh, in this particular talk as we go through changing the conversation, changing the community. And again, that's what we want to be about here at GVL Hustle is being able to change the community inside out. It just so happens that conversation will be the way in which we do that. So with that, guys, we're going to show a quick um, speaker reel on Jonathan, and he's going to come up. We're going to go through some exercises and Hopefully get out of here on time. I believe that we all share two universal desires. To have the opportunity to communicate and the respect to be heard. You do have conversations all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're always communicating, but you're always having conversations. And it's almost natural, meaning it just happens. But it's also intentional. It's unnatural, too, because we become so used to not having it. It's like an artist is remembered for their artwork. You and I are known and remembered for our vocal art. If you've never thought of yourself as a leader and you're watching this, congratulations, I'll tell you. Your leader set the temperature, right? Yeah. Careless vocal art is like that spring break tattoo. It felt and seemed really good at the time. 
I'm still naive or brave enough to think I can change the world one conversation at a time. All right, guys, y'all give it up for John. <laughs> You would think speakers would understand how to work microphones. <laughs> well, this is awesome. I'm very excited to be with you. Thanks for coming out. I hid my notebook back here just so that I stay on point. Um, I need you to look at your neighbor. Okay, now choose carefully, though, because one of your neighbors is going to be really excited that you pick them. The other one's going to feel like that last kid picked dodgeball and just feel really rejected. Look at your neighbor, and this is what you're going to say. You're going to talk a lot. Okay, now look at your other neighbor and say, you're going to have to listen to me talk a lot. <laughs> All right, well, that was a very kind introduction from Tyler. It's, it's just been a fun journey, and you'll hear about some of that as we go on tonight. But, you know, you saw the cool speaker reel, right? And, and Tyler told you some fun things about me. I, I don't know if you're like, like me in this regard. A speaker gets up to talk, and you're like, I wonder what they're like at home, right? I feel like my wife should do a speaker reel so that you could get like Jonathan Parker behind the scenes, you know, after I come out on stage. But here, here's, here's 90 seconds of me behind, behind the scenes. Shaved my head for the first time when I was in first grade. True story. My mother thought it was a phase. Nope. Um, the, the salon that actually buzzed it, it was more of a buzz, it was a zero or a one or something like that, uh, is still open. My mom still goes get her nails done at that salon. Uh, it's kind of incredible. Uh, I wear funky socks. I failed first grade. Uh, I had acne starting around fifth grade. Started shaving around sixth grade. Middle school sucked. Um, <laughs> that was my middle school experience. Came down here to go to school, met my lovely bride, dated her for five years, broke up with her three times and convinced her to take me back three times, which that's pretty impressive. She's wonderful. She's awesome. We have three boys, Titus, Judah, Zion. Their ages are four, three, and two. Four, three, and two. All of the moms and women out there are like, she is a saint. And she took all three of them to the pool and bought them pizza so I could come up here and talk. So can we just give it up for Jess real quick? She's really excited now that people follow me around with the camera most of the time because she actually gets to hear most of these talks. So that's really great. Um, let's see, I grew up in Connecticut, I already said it. Okay, so I'm pretty much an open book, but books don't read themselves unless they're audiobooks, because that's cool now. But anyone have a question about me? Anything? Going once, twice, question? Wow, that was a great introduction, awesome. Okay, well here, at any point, if something comes to your mind, I will give you another opportunity. That's my promise. Okay, so why do I love conversation so much? Let me, let me just explain it to you uh, this way. For most people, talking comes pretty easily. For most people, they, they grow up in such a way that talking and forming words and being able to communicate comes easily. That's not so much my case. I was very sick as a child. I had seizures. I spent most of my early childhood, really zero to five, with, with double ear infections, multiple illnesses that affected my hearing, which obviously then affected my speech. And I really didn't speak well until I was almost between four and five. And, and we grew up in a small town in Newington, and this was before you know, speech teachers were a thing. I went to a very small uh, private school, so they didn't have added resources or anything like that. So my mom really had to spend time helping me learn how to talk to people and how to communicate and how to form words. There's actually, to this day, there are still words that I cannot say because I can't, I can't form my, my tongue. I can't form my mouth to say them. I can hear them in my head, but I can't get them to come out correctly, and people are always like, what are some of those words? I'm like, I can't say them. <laughs> See? I just don't even, I don't know how to help you people. I'm like, can't say them. Uh, but when you hear them, it's kind of funny, because I have no idea what I'm saying. And I, would, I had to work to talk, but then the crazy thing was, I, I fell in love with talking. So I did plays, and I would do speeches, and I love speech class, like speech 101 in college. I was like, yeah. Everyone else is freaking out. I'm like, give me the mic, right? I love to talk. But what I realized was talking and having a conversation were two different things. I, was re I, I got really good at running my mouth. But I started to get really bad at opening my ears. I got really good knowing what I wanted to say. 
while at the same time devaluing what you were saying. I was always the smartest person in the room, even at 19. And you always were the dumbest. And then all of a sudden I realized, man, I, and we're going to talk about this a little, I made a lot of noise. I didn't have a lot of conversation. And the journey I went on to, to, to understand, to discover this idea of the art of the conversation, this was personal for me. I never meant to do this. This was not on the trajectory to share this with you, because this is a personal journey. This is personal for me. And all of the, all of the content you're going to hear tonight, and if you come hear me talk anywhere else, all that content, that was 100% that was selfish for me, because I wanted to be better at having conversations. And now that I have the opportunity to share that with people, especially in my hometown of Greenville, because I do believe, as you heard in the video, if we, can, if we can change the world, it will be through conversation. And I'm on social media, obviously, uh, so are most of you. And I'm grateful for that avenue, but social media is just another avenue for me to sit with you face to face and have a conversation. It's just another means. So today, what I'm going to share with you is deeply personal to me. And I want it to become deeply personal to you because as you already heard, you are an artist. The words that come out of your mouth produce artwork that, that can't be captured in a film or on canvas. It can't even be molded by clay, your words are your unique artwork. And they not only capture the subject being discussed, whether that's sports or marketing or business or your hustle or your family, but it just doesn't capture the subject. It also is a direct reflection of you. Yes, some of these great pieces of art and poetry and music were created for our enjoyment and for our development, but it was a reflection of the artist, which means the words that come out of your mouth, the conversations that you have, they're your vocal art, and they are a direct reflection of you. Most people do not remember what was talked about. They remember what was created in the conversation. They may not remember you, but they will remember what you say. Why? Because you create art. And when I realized that my words, my conversations were artwork, everything began to change because just think about that. That means every time you use a word, that will go into someone's memory. And bad vocal art is like that spring break tattoo with the four dolphins on the back and you thought you were going to be friends with everyone at 17, right? Like that's what that is. And even though you cover it up and you go back and you say something like, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Or, oh man, that, sorry, that was just the heat of the moment. Or no, you just misunderstood me. That original art is just a cover-up tattoo. So I want you to leave here and take a conversation seriously, personally, and here's why. Because if Greenville is going to change, we need to change the conversation. We can't yell at one another. We can't stand, can't pick, figure out what corner we need to be in, what niche we're supposed to be in, and just yell back and forth at one another. Okay? We need to lower the noise and raise the conversation. And hopefully tonight, we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. We're going to talk. This is just conversation. I'm going to get a little speaky, probably going to stand up a little bit. Okay, grew up Baptist, might get a little preachy too. That's going to be all right. Everyone's going to be okay. If you brought a handkerchief, that will help me out a little bit though. You just wave that around. But you're going to talk. We're going to have some group exercises and this is going to be a lot of fun. So you ready to have fun? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is how I define a conversation. This is going to be our outline for tonight. This is how I define a conversation. A conversation is the mutual sharing of ideas, stories, and experiences around a specific topic that builds common ground. Now, we're going to break that down all through the night, but let me say it one more time. A conversation is the mutual sharing of ideas, stories, and experiences around a specific topic that builds common ground. And tonight, we're going to look at the main parts of that definition, and we're all going to leave here better vocal artists. I tell all of my clients, all of my friends, all the groups I talk to, the art of the conversation is not meant to be thought about, right? This isn't going to be a philosophical exercise where you're going to go drink tea afterwards and discuss the finer points of it. My goal is when you leave here, you have practical takeaways that will add value to your life, to your conversations, no matter who it is. When you get up to go over and continue networking, it's going to be a totally different experience if you take to heart the idea that your conversations are your vocal art. So let's talk about this first one. It is a mutual sharing a mutual sharing. One of the things that, and maybe you've picked up on this in, in our culture, and I think it, it came in almost hidden, kind of came in almost like a Trojan horse, kind of came in the back door. 
Uh, we, we have now begun to live in a give and take culture. It's all give and take. It, it, it's, it's give in the sense of, I got to get this off my chest. It, it's not give like Christmas morning give. It, I'm stuck with this, so I'm going to abdicate it to you. Like, I don't want to be responsible anymore. I don't want to be responsible for what I say on social media. I don't want to be responsible for how I treat other people. I'm just, I'm just getting it off my chest. I'm just giving it to you. I don't want to be accountable for this anymore. I'm just getting rid of it. But it's give and then it's take, right? It's you show up to other networking events and the thought that runs through people's minds, what can I take from people? How much free legal advice can I get over this dinner? I mean, I know this lawyer is my friend, but I, I wonder if that graphic designer who's trying to make it on his own, I wonder if I, if, 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 he'll just, if I can just take something from him. And, and our mindset is, I want to get rid of all the stuff I don't want, and I want to take all the best from other people. And that comes up in a conversation. I, I mean, some of us do it in an email, but most of us know that when you put it in words on a piece of paper, man, that doesn't sound good. But, but maybe if I can get face-to-face, -face, mope a little bit, you've even, you probably, come on, you know what I'm talking Like, I do this too, right? You even practice, like, I'll just go like, you know, I just need... And our whole culture is just, just good with it now. And in this give and take culture, people walk in defensive or offensive. You can't even approach a new person without them thinking they want to take, you want to take something from them. Like the stranger on the bus, you know, on the bus seat, or if you're on an airplane, you're like, hey, how are you? Like, what do you want? I got nothing. <laughs> Everyone's defensive or they're offensive. Everyone is immediate, like, what do you do? Okay, no, uninterested. What do you do? No, nope. okay, good. What? Oh, no, definitely not. Like, like, they're just picking through the crowd. There's no conversation. It's give and take. I want to get something off my chest, and I want to take whatever you have. My kids do this. Okay, I got four, three, and two-year-olds, right? All they get is give and take, give and take, give and take. Right before I came up here, my, like I said, they went to the pool, and they're eating pizza at the pool. Uh, four, three, and two, two, three, and four. However, it's best for you to keep count. They're close. Um, <laughs> The, their favorite word, me first, me first, me first, me first, mine, mine. Judah, give Titus a toy. Whatever toy Judah, do, does Judah give Titus the toy Judah wants? What toy does he give him? One he doesn't want, right? Just take this junk, right? So again, I'm not trying to be rude, but we're keeping it real here, and this is just simple. Most people are like children when it comes to conversation. They're like children. And we need to change the conversation if we want to change the community, which means if you're here now, if you're in GVL Hustle, you can't be satisfied or complacent with the idea of give and take. You can't do it. You cannot be satisfied with give and take. So what you need to do is it's mutual sharing. You need to adopt a sharing and investing culture. See, a conversation isn't I give you something off my chest or I take something from you and I go on my way. It means we share. It means we hold space together. Uh, what's your name? Chris. Chris, you want to help me out for a second? Sure. Come, come on over here, Chris. Everyone give Chris a round of applause. First volunteer. Sit right there. See, in a give and take reality, this doesn't happen. All right, Chris, you ready? Yep. Do, just for the record, did I tell you we were going to do this? No. No? I'm not going to do any magic trick either so he doesn't have a card hidden up his sleeve. <laughs> All right, so you have no idea. Is this the first time we've met? Yeah. Outstanding. How long have you lived in Greenville? Two, three years. Two, three years? Yeah. Change your mind pretty quick about that. Yeah. <laughs> One year, maybe? Yesterday. <laughs> okay, two to three years. What is it that you do for a living? I'm a professional dog trainer. Oh, that is awesome. How many of you have dogs? How many of you need them trained still, right? Okay, so what kind of dog is your favorite dog? Um, I don't have a favorite. No. Mm -mm. Do you have a dog? Mm -hmm. I have four. You have four? All right, what are their breeds? Uh, two mixed breeds, three mixed breeds, and an all-black German Shepherd. What's your favorite thing about dogs? Uh, the loyalty. loyalty? Mm -hmm. You know what my favorite thing about dogs is? They're not cats. <laughs> <laughs> Any cat people? Any cat people in the audience? Okay. All right, cool. Let's make sure they don't get to register for this gathering. <laughs> all right, Chris, thank you so much. You. Everyone give Chris a hand. See, mutual sharing and investing is about sharing space. It's about being close. 
So being honest and vulnerable and real and funny and not overthinking it. See, sharing and investing is really about responsibility and accountability. See, when I share something with you, I, I become responsible for what I say. And by sharing something with you, sharing part of my life or sharing some knowledge that I have or sharing a friend that I have, sharing some, like I become responsible to you. I become responsible for it. So just think about this. What would change in your conversation if you became 100% responsible for every word that came out of your mouth and everything you told that person to go do, believe, or see? You become responsible. That's the sharing piece. You've got to mutually share, right? It goes back and forth, but it's also about investing, right? And investing is about accountability, right? If I give you $10 because you said you're going to go out and start a business that's going to change Greenville's community, I'm going to come in a little bit and go, Where's my, how's the $10 going? Right? Because now I'm accountable to the investment in which I've made. But then that investment's also accountable to me. Like, this is how I did it, right? So when we change the conversation, it's about sharing, which makes us now 100% responsible. And it's about investing, which now makes us accountable to one another. But if you want give and take, you don't want responsibility or you don't, and you don't want accountability. So the first thing we have to understand about conversation, about your vocal art, is it's about mutually sharing. It's about sharing space. It's about doing it together. You can't have a conversation by yourself. There's no such thing as a one-sided conversation. That's called a monologue. And no one wants to be on the other side of your monologue. See, conversations, your vocal art, your vocal art's about sharing and investing into people. And this mutual idea of sharing, this is what I believe. Sharing is the first step to authenticity. Sharing is the first step to authenticity. You cannot be authentic. You cannot be authentically you if you will not share with people. If it's just all give and take, that's not, that's not really you being you. That's you trying to be something. Because just like Titus, Judah, Zion, my, my boys, even though they live in a give and take culture and even though they operate like give and take culture, Jessica and I are not trying to be, help them become better givers and better takers. We want them to be themselves. We want them to be specific to who they were wired to be. And that's the first step in authenticity, this idea of sharing. But the other, the other side of this idea of authenticity is that when you're being authentic and sharing with people, you get to know a lot of cool people and you actually get familiar, familiar with people. And, and what is the common phrase? What happens? Familiarity breeds content. Now that sounds awful, right? Like, so we're here trying to tell you, invest in GVL Hustle, get to know these movers, shakers, and doers, pour into the community, but the more familiar you get with them, the more you're going to hate them. <laughs> right? It's kind of sad. Right? Familiarity breeds contempt. You just start having contempt for these people. And, and I don't think that's actually what's happening. I think contempt, familiarity for, leads to contempt when you're give and take. Right? Because I know if every time we get coffee, you're just trying to take something from me, take something from me. Take, yes, I'm going to become contentful. But what I actually feel happens with familiarity is familiarity breeds complacency. See, the more I share with you and the more you share with me, the more space we share, the more complacent I come in my authenticity, the more complacent I come with my artwork, the more complacent I come with the words I use. I don't really think about it. But we have to understand that a conversation first starts with the mutual sharing. It's you sharing and the person you're talking about, sharing space, being authentic, realizing it's about responsibility and accountability. That's the start of any good conversation. Just think about what would change in your life, your relationships, in your business. If you're like, no, I'm not worried about what I can get out of you. I'm worried. I'm looking for what I can invest in you. I'm not looking just to get stuff off my chest. I'm actually looking to share space, share life, share ideas with you. Because that's the first step in authenticity. That's the first step to get rid of this complacent idea when it comes to being familiar with people. So I'm going to give you a chance to do that. All right, so everybody stand up. You can leave your stuff in your seat. You'll end up back there. Everyone stand up. And I want everybody to look around the room. Look around the room. All right, good. Get a good view. All right, so this is what I want you to do. You are going to self-select, and you're going to go stand next to the person that you know best in this room. And if you came here with your spouse or significant other, break up for a little bit. 
All right, the person you know best. You have 60 seconds. You ready? Go. So, so what was that experience like? Uh, Chris just said something to me, and I'm gonna ask him to share it real quick. So I just want to know what that experience was like, finding someone that you self-selected that you knew you best, and having to share something you didn't know. Chris, what was that like? Uh, it got heavy. Got heavy. What made it heavy? It just got like a deep conversation really fast. Deep conversation really fast. Good. What else? Tell me about the experience. Say again. It was hard. What made it hard? Uh, I think instinctually you kind of. You have to think of what you want to share. Okay. And then definitely it's not something that's comfortable. Okay, good. Just cover it, you have to think about it. Good. What else? How was this experience? We uh I think we lied to ourselves saying we really don't want to be vulnerable. Because everybody has something they, that the other person doesn't know about them. Right. But we get in a moment where like, can I actually share that? Right. With this person. Uh so we can sense it just put this wall where oh I've told you everything you know Exactly. But it's just a civil life. Yep. Good. What else? And then you put Go ahead, sir. Well, then you feel like you almost, am I, am, I tell, am I saying too much, right? right? And then once you get to the point where it's probably their turn, you might want to say too much more than what they need. Okay. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Um, I feel like most, most people would, as soon as you said share something, everyone had something that came to their mind first. And then they probably chose the second or third not as deep option to share before someone went really, really deep, and then they were like, oh shit, I should have shared that first one. Right? <laughs> yeah, you self-selected, self-identified, and back up. Some people, did anyone else do that? Anyone else do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Somebody else, one more person, what that experience was like? Yeah, I had, I had a fear of it. If I told them anything real personal, who else is eager to tell? Right, yep, good. And back here, hand back here. I feel like I have to try really hard to think about something like that was... It was hard? Yeah, it was really hard to find something worth saying. Yeah. So I want you to think about what you just did. That was three minutes. It got deep, it was hard, it was discomfortable. You had to walk through all the stuff you could have shared or you probably, that first thing that popped in your mind is something you probably really need to share with somebody. So I haven't done this enough. If that first thing popped in your mind when I say share something that that person who knows you best doesn't know, that's probably something you need to like figure out a time to go share with that person. Because that means you gotta get, you, you have to share that space with someone. But like you did this in three minutes. Just imagine what would happen if everyone you were familiar with, rather than becoming complacent with them, you just said, hey, we haven't been together for a week. Tell me one thing I don't know about you. I mean, when I, I, I end up talking to Tyler quite a bit, one of the first questions, hey, what happened? Tell me something else. Tell me something else. See, it got deep real quick with people you know. That's why you can just get rid of small talk altogether with people you know. Like, can we just stop wasting time? Create amazing, remarkable, life-changing vocal art with people you already know. Don't talk about the weather, okay? Let's just, put, let's just put small talk off to the side for people you know. Okay, so you have to understand a conversation is a mutual sharing. You just had a conversation. You just mutually shared. But it's around ideas, stories, and experiences, okay? Ideas, stories, and experiences. And I always show up with a lot more to talk about than I actually have time to say. So if you have any questions, here's a way to contact me. Um, but I, want, I just want to talk about the formula, the formula for what I'm calling engaging. Okay, idea stories and experiences about engaging. If the first idea of this idea of a conversation was about sharing, this is about engaging. And here's the formula for engagement. Healthy, awesome, remarkable, meaningful engagement. It's sharing, which we just talked about, plus questions, plus listening. It's sharing, plus questions, plus listening equals meaningful engagement. And when we are engaging someone, when we are in this idea of a conversation, these are the three pieces that you need to know. So let's just, we've already talked about sharing. Let's briefly talk about questions and listening, and then you're going to have another fun exercise, okay? So questions. The, the current culture we live in there is mostly filled with noise. It's noise. You got some noise? Do you have any noise? It's this. It's really obnoxious. That's getting louder. All right, that's good. Right? So you walk into a room, you're in a conversation, and all you're thinking about is, oh my word, when will this end? Like, like I showed up to this networking event just because I you know, told my boss I had to, or I'm talking to this person because I have to, and it's just noise. The news stations, right? There's a lot of noise. 
the radio stations, a lot of noise, social media, a lot of noise, conversations you have about nothing is just a lot of noise. Noise is the current culture. That's what it looks like in a give and take, just noise. But a sharing and investing, something about true engagement sounds a little bit like this. See, that sound, that actually is meaningful. Yeah. All right. See, that's the difference, okay? So a conversation that's not really a conversation, which is just you like spilling words and, in my words, putting paint on canvas recklessly, it's just noise and people want you to be done as quickly as possible. But when a true artist takes their craft seriously and they take those beats and those sounds and they take those words and they take that poetry and they take that clay and they make it something awesome and special and unique, you don't want it to end. That sound came on and every, like, people just started moving. Why? Because because true artistry moves people. Just think about this. Your conversations can move people. Your conversations can move people. And we've already talked about sharing, but this next step of this really meaningful engagement is about questions. And I only have one thing I want you to really think about now. I, I want you to change this in your life. I want you to make this change. I want you to start asking for an invitation to give your opinion. Because when we just share... We live under the misconception that just because someone's talking to us means they want our opinion on it. Just because someone's talking to you does not mean they want your opinion. Some of you need to write that on like the palm of your hand so when you're getting ready to talk, you're like, they don't want my opinion. <laughs> I want you to start asking people for an invitation to give your opinion. And it could be something like this. Someone's done talking, you simply go, hey, are you open to feedback on that? You open to feedback on that? Because if they say no, guess what? You don't burn relational capital. You're like, cool. If they say no, you don't have to ruin that relationship. You don't have to kick down the door. But if they say yes, just think about how people are so more welcoming when they invite you in rather than when you kick down the door. If you showed up at my house tonight and you kick down the door, you bang, 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 until I opened it, I'd be like, what are you doing? But if you ring the doorbell, like, hey, can, can I come in for a minute? Yeah, yeah sure, come on in. It'd be weird, but hey. <laughs> my wife would probably make you a beautiful meal because that's what she does. But an invitation is so much better. Just think about what would change in your relationship if it wasn't always about whose opinion is better, but you just saying, hey, are you open to another perspective on that? I think you're seeing that just one way. Are you open to hearing my perspective? Ask for an invitation to give your opinion, and all of a sudden, your conversations will start moving from noise to sound. It means when your opinion shared, it's something that someone wanted. They welcomed that invitation. They, they said, yes, please. And now you have a receptive audience. This will save relationships. This will save business ideas. Listen, if you're out hustling and someone tells you what they're doing in their business and you go, you know what I would do? They don't care. They have not hired you. <laughs> it's just, they haven't hired you. But if you're like, hey, are you open to just another idea on that, that regard? When it comes to questions, ask for an invitation to give an opinion. And then it comes to listening. Then it comes this idea of listening, right? So sharing questions, listening. And there's so much under here, but this is what I want to share with you about listening. Culture has created active responders, but passive listeners. Now, if you have an iPhone, right? And you get those three little dots on the text message. Oh man, I love those. Because I send a message and oh, they're responding. I'm like, yes. And then they go away and there's no message. What is wrong with these people? I know <laughs> you were just communicating. And if you have an Android phone, please, I, can, I can't even deal with it, right? Because I want, I want immediate response, right? We used to go to restaurants, sit-down restaurants with the intention to do what? Sit down. You show up for five minutes, they're like, where's the server? Why isn't my dinner here? You went to a sit-down restaurant. It's meant to be slow, right? It's a scratch kitchen, right? It's supposed to be slow, but we want everything fast. Like, this happened to me yesterday. I went to Culver's for my boys, went through drive through ordered, pulled up, paid, and she went, all right, pull around, your food will be right around. I looked at my wife, I was like, what? This drive through She's like, well, Jonathan, it's not fast food, it's food fast. I was like, are you kidding me? We're going to wait for fast? And I thought to myself, I'm about to teach this to GVL Hustle, and look, I can't even, like, put, practice my own thing, right? We're active responders, but that means we're passive listeners. Here's the deal. If you only listen to somebody 50% of the time, you're only 50% able to answer them. 
If you cut somebody off 50% along the way because you know what they need to do or you know the answer, you've only listened to them 50%, which means your answer is only 50% right, which makes it 50% wrong. You need to listen as actively as you do talking. Because culture, other networking events, other groups of people you may be hanging around, other groups of people you may need to stop hanging around, aren't actually listening to you. They're just waiting for you to stop talking so they can start. And you generally know that that person stopped listening to you when the first phrase out of their mouth is, I know what you mean, because when I... Or this phrase, when I totally agree. What? How can you ever totally agree with another human being? Have you met yourself? Do you even agree with yourself totally? <laughs> we have to listen. So here's, here's how I want you to do it, right? So if it's about asking for an invitation to give your opinion when it comes to questions, sharing, right? Sharing is about being your authentic self, being you. Here's the thing about listening. Listen for connection before drawing attention. Listen for, how can you connect with that person before th throwing the spotlight on you? How can you connect with their story before putting the spotlight? How can, you, how can you emphasize that story and get them to tell you more details of their story before you tell them your story? How can you listen for connection before drawing attention? And that's the formula for engagement. That's the idea of ideas, stories, and experiences. It's about sharing something that's uniquely yours. And that's the person asking questions about you and them listening. That's what we need if we want to change this community. That's what we need. Okay, so we're going to do one more quick exercise. Because this is, I think this, is, this might be the most important exercise we do. And then if Tyler gives me the thumbs up, we'll do one more. Okay, but here's what I want you to do. I want everyone to stand back up. I want you to look around the room again. And I want you to find the person you don't know at all. Complete stranger and go stand next to that person. You might not have to go far. And you can go in groups of two or three, two or three, two or three. A person you don't know at all, feel free to enter your name first. All right, when you got your person, raise your hand. When you got your person or persons, raise your hand, raise your hands, raise your hand. All right, all right, so listen, listen, listen. You just self-selected that you've never met this person before. They are a total stranger. They don't know who you are unless you're Dr. C and then everybody knows who you are, right? All right, everyone knows. Uh, no dancing. Okay, listen. Here, here's the thing. You've just self-selected. Before, before you went deep with a person right off the bat, right? Because you had to tell them something that they didn't know about you and you said they knew you. But this is a total stranger. So this is a, question, this is a statement I want you to finish. What I want you to know about me is you get, you get to share who you want to be. Not your LinkedIn profile, not your social media handle, not what your friends think, not what your parents think, not what your boss thinks. You get to say, what I want you to know about me is... And then that other person, ask questions, ask questions, listen. And then after a minute, I'll yell switch if you've got a group of three, then go to the second. And then after a minute and a half, I'll, I'll yell it again. But listen, you've just met this person the first time. There's no reason to lie. You gain nothing from not telling the truth. You gain nothing. But you lose the opportunity to create remarkable vocal art together and for yourself. All right? So what I want you to know about me is go. <laughs>
We move to engaging, and here's the third piece I want us to understand. Conversation is about building. Remember, the mutual sharing of ideas, stories, and experiences around a specific topic that builds common ground. A conversation is about sharing, engaging, and building. The goal of every conversation, the goal of every conversation is to build common ground. But our culture today, we, we like soapboxes and we stand on pillars and there's huge gaps between us. You know, so someone's standing over there, I'm standing over here and we got just a little bit of ground and we're yelling at one another. We're telling each other why the other person's wrong. Or if we get close enough, you know, we have, you know, this is all the common ground we have and we agree on something, but because the ground's so small, the moment I disagree with them, right, it's just one thing and I'm like, I'm done with that. See, the, the goal, if you're creating artwork, the goal is to create common ground, which means you should have more room to have a conversation with that person, more room to do life with that person. So if you disagree with them over here, you can still have a relationship with them. You do know that you can have relationships with people that you disagree with politically, right? Like it is, po it is possible. <laughs> because if it's one area of your life and you got all this, like making Greenville better. So you vote for someone different one time a year. Theologically, socially, like if you drink Budweiser, like we can still be friends. <laughs> it's okay. I might try to move you wrong, right? But like common ground, that's the goal of every conversation. So when you leave here tonight, you should have more room to talk with people. You should have more common ground with them. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. This is going to be, another, this is going to be a group exercise. Uh, Tyler's going to come help. We're going to break you up. And we don't have time for small talk. Okay? The weather's great. Look, it's sunny, finally. Okay? But here's the thing that gets in the way of common ground. Obstacles. Obstacles get in the way of common ground. Like, it's like roadways in Greenville. Potholes everywhere. You got to zig, you got to zag all the time. Common ground is disrupted by obstacles. So it takes true leaders, it takes true artists to identify what those obstacles are and say those aren't going to be in our conversation. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. It, again, I know we're pushing a little over time. I super appreciate you going a little bit, little bit longer because I believe this will really change your life and change this culture and community that is being built here at GVL Hustle. We're going to divide you up into 10 groups, right? About eight, eight people or so. Okay, you spread out a little bit, and then what's the, how do you want, you want someone to capture all the notes? Okay, so you can pick a team leader or someone can just step and lead. I recommend the, the latter, right, just somebody lead if you're in a group of leaders, okay? So here, everyone stand up, self-select in groups of eight to ten, and then when you get there, raise your hands, eight to ten. Conversations aren't where you, aren't where you listen to replies, you listen to understand. Right. I don't just want to reply to you to re rebut your your rebuttal like like of what you what you believe. I want to understand your point of view, so then we can have we can share common ground. Even if we disagree, there's going to be an area that we that we can agree upon that we can at least share common ground, right? So everybody needs to be kind of open minded. I also think that everybody is a product of their upbringing, so it's difficult to dive into someone else's upbringing and understand their point of view. So we're stuck in our ways. All right, you guys are getting. I love this. I love conversation. So look, can you believe what we've accomplished in 45 minutes? You've talked to somebody you haven't known, you've talked to someone you've known for a long time and shared something you never shared with them before. You met a brand new friend and he had a ton of fun doing that. And now we've just identified obstacles. And we did that in 45 minutes just being intentional with our vocal art. Ugh, that's awesome. That's how you change the community. All right, so listen, I want, I want us to be able to be respectful in here. So I'm gonna go to each group and whoever the, the leader was, the spokesman was, just gonna share what those distractions are. We're gonna, we're gonna capture them, uh, and then it will be a brief wrap up, and then you'll hear just a little bit from Tyler. All right, so I'm gonna start over here with this group. Who is, all right, who is, this, who is the leader? The man with the hat. I won't call myself the leader, but I'm the recorder, so we'll say very quickly, fear, insecurity, being judged, prejudice, intelligence, trust or lack of, uh, alcohol, lack of confidence, afraid, but afraid to speak up, uh, they don't care, past experience, social status, opinion, technology, distraction, or lack of interest. Awesome. Would everyone agree with those? We win. Yeah. Woo All right, let's go to this next group. Who's next? Right. 
Cool. Uh, so I'm just going to do top five. From, we obviously have the main ones, ego, pride, all that stuff. But one of the ladies said, burnout, not having enough energy in an environment. The camera guy said right here, not understanding the question or the agenda that you're even trying to solve, the problem you're trying to solve, overthinking, insecurity, self-image, environment, as far as we talked about the music being a little loud, but we're trying to connect, right? Yeah. So things like that, just environment, uh, past experiences, and uh, sex, race, politics, all the main stuff. So. Awesome. Okay, now make sure you save these. Don't delete them, because we're going to need to capture them also. Okay, is there a group over here? Yeah. Awesome. We had... Arrogance, uh, lack of listening, fear, politics, sports, sexuality, appearance, judgment, preconceptions, religion, self-image, and physical distance. Awesome. Yeah, all these things just get in the way of building common ground. But the moment you're able to share and be authentic in so many of these areas, <laughs> in, in these areas, you're just, able, you're just able to have more common ground. All right, another group here who's a spokesperson. Here I come. Okay, religion, politics, anything you also attach your humanity to. Yeah. Uh, active listening is not practiced. People are naturally selfish. We want what we want. Stubbornness, uh, not changing your views or listening to others. Uh, missing an open mind mentality. And being too emotional, allowing it to fuel our perspectives. Awesome. Yeah, these things just get in the way. But once they're overcome, it's like when you, when you finally were able to dunk that basketball or lift that amount of weights or cook that meal without burning it, especially on Thanksgiving. Once you overcome them, you have more common ground. You're able to succeed. Where's the group? Here we go. Uh, politics, uh, you're raising your ego, bias, money, fear, religion, insecurity, culture, ignorance, goals, convictions, morals, alcohol. That's awesome. Yeah, fear, insecurity, distractions. <laughs> uh, alcohol is coming up. I think that's a conversation worth having. All right, where are we here? Okay. Hey. Okay, insecurities, truth, goals, um, the end result, time, uh, religion, education, political. Um, view college sports team, occupation, age, uh, wealth, class, hygiene, um, family, environment, um, morality, and gender. That's right. Good, good. Okay, a couple more groups. Where are we here? Right here. So we got uh, religious beliefs, politics, negativity, difference, judgment, perspectives, expectations, like physical barriers, um, offensive or resentment, image, ethics, language, fear, self-image, noise, ego, and the desire to be right. Desire to be right is a huge obstacle. OK, group over here. Yeah. All right, yes, ma'am. How are you? Politics, religion, race, fear, judging, closed-minding, mm. ignorance, lack of knowledge, prejudging, expectations, lack of respect, overconfident, ego, pride, profiling, confidence, intimidation, and social status. Yeah, those are huge. Is there another group I missed? OK, so look, before you move to your seat, I want you to think about what you just did, right? I want to close this loop. You just publicly, in that group, and then you brought it up as, as a community, you just shared something. Which, if it wasn't give and take, which means you weren't just getting this off your chest, like, well, this is why I don't have good conversations, so here. But if you actually shared and you want to invest in this community, Greenville community, that means you are now responsible and accountable to remove all of those obstacles you just talked about. Like I said, this isn't, this isn't philosophical. Conversations don't play in the ethereal. This is on the ground. You, just as a group of about 100 people, identified dozens of obstacles that you shared. And if you are serious about creating a culture of change, we have to change the conversation, which means these obstacles can no longer stop you from creating remarkable vocal art. Because you're an artist. You create artwork that will be remembered, and that artwork will be remembered in this community. So you either can be remembered for not getting us anywhere, or be part of moving us forward. Every great art artist leaves a legacy, not for who they are, but what they create. You will be remembered for what you create. Don't you want that to be something remarkable, meaningful, memorable that changes this community? You can do all of that through a conversation. All right, let's head back to our seats and we'll wrap up. All right, guys, before we wrap up, let's give a round of applause to Jonathan Parker. That was incredible. Whoa. That was awesome. So, guys, we're going to wrap up. I know we're a little bit behind. We're almost done here. Um, this is what I took away from this. All these things, all these... Um, barriers, if you will, 
to having real conversations, insecurity, trust, social status, religion, stubborn, stubbornness, ego. That's, that's probably the biggest and kind of encompasses all of these. But all these things, the whole idea of GVL Hustle was to eliminate those. Like, that was the entire thing. Like, it, it wasn't some grandiose thing. It was just like, hey, where, how can we get some people together that have done some stuff, that are doing some things, and that are listening to podcasts that we listen to, that are watching stuff on YouTube that, that we watch, that are reading books that we read. How can we just get them in a, in a place and remove all this, remove all the barriers where people could be authentic uh, and transparent, where someone could come in and say, hey, man, what's up? And not just say, not much, man, everything's great. But it could be like, man, I had a freaking terrible week. I had a terrible week. Listen to what happened. And to where the other person would be like, oh, man, I'd love to talk to you more about that. Maybe grab coffee this week or let's grab lunch. And that could create those kind of connections that I just don't know where you find those. I haven't been able to find them. At the bar, definitely looked plenty. Didn't find them. <laughs> found a lot of other stuff I shouldn't have. Um, at the gym, yeah. Church, work. It was just a gap. And so we wanted to be able to fill that gap. And so we're talking about next steps. Kind of what is GV Hustle again? What is it going to look like moving forward? Well, it's a monthly connection to GVL Elite. And, and I mean that GVL Elite, not in like, a, you know, 30 under 30, 40 under 40, 50, under, you know, all that kind of stuff. I just mean the people that are out there trying to live up to their full potential. People that are out there actually trying to get better, trying to level up. Uh, people that are out there putting in the work and that want to surround themselves with other people like that because it's contagious. They want to be surrounded by people that are all trying to get better so that just like that high tide raises all ships, they can level up as well. And so that's what it is, a monthly connection. There's going to be exclusive access to coaching, teaching, training. This is all going to be via the private Facebook group and some of the things that we're going to be doing in that. We're going to have speakers that are becoming in that. We're going to do lectures in there. We're going to have different trainings on all kinds of different stuff going on in there. And it also creates kind of like this um, engagement pod to where when people are posting stuff on there and it gets shared and liked and commented and all those things that those that are in social media world get excited about or, or hate one or the other. Um, but it kind of creates that. It, again, it creates another element outside of this one meeting where you can reconnect with those people, where we can have a Facebook Live, where we bring Jonathan back on to dig a little deeper in one of those topics that you guys felt was the most impactful. Different things like that, to where it's not just I show up to a meeting, I go back, and it's just business as usual. We want this to be something where it's like an ongoing platform to be continually growing uh, always. And so what does that look like from a financial perspective? Because obviously there's a cost that's associated with that. Um, obviously this meeting didn't pay anything, last meeting didn't pay anything, but from here moving forward, it's 100 bucks a month to be a member of GVL Hustle. And that gets you access to all these things, and there's gonna be so much more. But the interesting perspective that I have is a conversation with my business partner, Joseph Caldwell. Some of you uh, know my business partner, Joseph Caldwell. Um, he's a part of Vistage, right? Vistage is awesome, nationwide, probably worldwide organization, CEO, CEO level, executive level. Uh, but it's a meetup once a month. And he's paying $1,500 a month, and they meet for one hour. And the funny thing was, he kind of he came to this just because I'm, I'm kind of forced him to, um, or made him. Those handcuffs help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he came, and he was kind of making fun of it, honestly. He was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to GVL Hustle tonight. We're going to get our hustle on. Like, <laughs> like literally, like, those are, like, his exact words. The interesting thing that happened, though, was when he got here, and, like, we broke into the groups, and he was in the group back there, I remember, because I was walking up, and I remember when we were talking about what GVL Hustle is, he was trying to be funny and said, like, I thought this was, like, a speed dating thing. And I don't even know how I got here. <laughs> but the interesting thing was, like, it's that number... <laughs> Yeah, that, well, it's, it, if that's what you would think it is, it's what it is. Uh, but the conversation that stemmed from there and that stemmed afterwards, he came to me a week later and was like, man, I got way more out of that meeting than I do at Vistage, that I pay 1500 bucks a month to go to, just because of the energy in the room. And the thing about the, that I know about him is if he hated it, he would have told me he hated it, and he wouldn't have even felt bad about it. And so I realized that there is a value to this. And whenever you tie... Uh, value to something that you're making a commitment to, it just gives you some skin in the game. And it gives us the ability to go out and get even better 
speakers, even better exercises, even better platforms for you guys to connect on. And, uh, and it'll grow from there. So the third one is coming up next month. These are going to be monthly. It's the first Sunday of each month. Uh, but what you can do to join and become a member of GVL Hustle is real easy. All you got to do is text GVL now. doesn't matter, lowercase, uppercase, whatever, to 90210. Yes, we have the short code, 90210. <laughs> Genius. If you have T-Mobile, it doesn't work. So those that have T-Mobile have to see us afterwards. It's so funny. We were setting this tech scan. Them? We were setting this tech platform up uh, the other day, and he was like, "Man, we can use 90210, but people that don't have T, people that have T-Mobile, they're not going to be able to use it." And I was like, "Screw T-Mobile." I was like, "Who the, I was like, "Who the heck has T-Mobile?" It's like two percent of the people. And then Ricky, who I'm talking about, sent me a screenshot like an hour later, and into the, the top, you know, where it says like Verizon, AT&T, it said T-Mobile, and I was telling him the entire time. <laughs> Sorry. But that's how, you get, that's how you get to become a member, um, and these are going to be happening every single month. Um, as with anything, they're going to get bigger and better. As with anything, there's going to be more stuff involved. As with, with anything, it's going to get uh, to where we are at capacity people-wise, and we're talking about what that looks like. Is it 200? Is it 250? Is it 300? I mean, we're filling up this space right here uh, with the 90-some-odd that are here tonight, uh, but we will always be growing this group and making it, pouring our lives into it to make it as much, give it, get as much value out of it every single month. Um, that's something that we take extremely seriously and don't take lightly at all um, as far as that financial commitment and being not really even a member. It's kind of like an owner of it, like participating in this thing. Like, like John, like Jonathan would have been here regardless of whether he was speaking or not, right? Re Rebecca Hyas, who's out of town speaking somewhere else, well, she probably got paid 15 grand. We paid her nothing. <laughs> Something. But that was a good deal. Um, she's speaking somewhere else, but she would have been here tonight, even though she wasn't speaking, right? And so it's all about all of us coming together and, again, leveling up. So that's how you get involved. That's how you become a member. Um, what yeah. else you got? The only other thing, um, you know, we are saying if this, you know, a couple events are fine, you know, before you join. So if this is your second one, we'd ask you to join. Um, but if it's your first one, come back again trying to add value, trying to bring, really, this isn't about profit, this is about growth. And it's growth for us, it's growth for you, and we want to make it possible. Um, but, you know, I'll share what I shared in the group, uh, you know, the, the least that someone probably knows about me that I'd want someone to know about me. I think, am I phrasing that right, Jonathan? Yeah. And, you know, I've done a lot of things, you know, in life and that I'm proud of or excited about and, you know, but there's few things that bring me the joy and the pride of seeing 90 some odd people show up to this event and want to get engaged. And whether we end up having 50 people or 500 in this group, um, I'm just a proud to be a part of it and proud to be up here and proud to try to grow Greenville the right way, and uh, you have our commitment to try to do that. So thank you. One Guys. last thing, if your t-shirt wasn't in your size, localhustlegear.com, lots of gear. So. And you get a t-shirt when you sign up so you can kill two birds with one stone and all that good stuff. But with that, guys, if you guys want to hang out, we got some time. Um, but we are done for the evening. Yeah, we're done with the content, but hang out, network. We're going to turn some music back on. We have more uh, beer than we know what to do with. So please have another beverage. Uh, this is my space, so we're not, we don't have to go anywhere. Friend. Friend.